Creatine is the most researched sports supplement in the world. It's famous for building strength, muscle, and even brain power. But what if I told you it might actually make your VO2 max worse. My name is Nicholas, I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist and former professional triathlete. And in this video I'm going to show you what creatine actually does to your body, what the latest science say about its effect on VO2 max and endurance, who should seriously consider taking it and who might want to think twice, and how to decide if creatine is worth it for your training. By the end of this video you'll know if creatine is the secret weapon for endurance athletes or if it's actually holding you back. So let's start with what you clicked on this video for. Does creatine kill VO2 max? In 2023, a major scientific review looked at exactly that, and the results were not what I was expecting. But before we dive into the findings, let's quickly cover what creatine even is. In simple terms, creatine is a naturally occurring compound stored in your muscles that helps rapidly regenerate energy during short, explosive efforts. Now, here's the surprising part. After looking across different ages, sports, and training setups, the researchers came to one clear conclusion. Creatine supplementation had a negative effect on VO2 max. And it didn't seem to matter how much you trained, how much you supplemented, or who you were. On average, athletes who took creatine saw smaller improvements in VO2 max compared to those who didn't. So does that mean we should all avoid creatine if we want to run faster for longer? Well, not so fast. You see, Here's the thing, VO2 max is not just an expression of how much oxygen your body can use. It's expressed as milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. So if your body weight goes up, your VO2 max goes down, even if your absolute oxygen uptake stays the same. And guess what's one of creatine's absolutely most reliable effects? Weight gain. Not fat but water stored inside your muscles. On average, people gain around one to two kilograms of body weight when starting to supplement with creatine. So the drop in VO2 max the researchers saw might not mean that your aerobic engine is weaker. In other words, creatine might make your VO2 max look worse on paper while your performance stay the same or even improve. But that begs the question, does performance stay the same? Or does the added weight from creatine make you perform worse? To answer that, we can look at this meta-analysis from 2023. This time, researchers gathered all the studies on creatine supplementation in trained endurance athletes, and this is what they concluded. Creatine monohydrate supplementation was shown to be ineffective on endurance performance in a trained population, which fits our earlier point. Even though your VO2 max looks worse on paper, or at least you improve less than without creatine, your performance stays about the same. It does not mean that your performance is worse. But if you're a runner where weight is such a key factor, I still think it's worth noting that most people gain a kilogram or two when they start to take creatine. So what's the takeaway? If your goal is pure endurance, then creatine won't help you in a single session. It likely won't tank you, but it won't move the needle either. So if creatine is not a magic pill for your VO2 max and it might actually make it worse, then why do so many endurance athletes still take it? This is where it gets interesting and a bit nuanced. You see, creatine has been shown to have a few other effects. Effects that might actually make endurance athletes better over the long run. You see, a scientific review from 2021 that examined all the benefits of creatine on athletic performance found that creatine can make you better in nine different areas. It helps you push harder for longer in short, intense bursts. It helps your muscles grow bigger and stronger over time. It helps your muscles store more fuel for training and racing. It increases your anaerobic threshold, meaning you can go faster before your legs start to burn out. It might help your cells deliver energy more efficiently. It makes you capable of handling more total training without breaking down as quickly. It enhances recovery, meaning you bounce back faster between workouts. And finally, it gives you a greater training tolerance. And those last three are especially interesting if you want to run faster for longer or become a better endurance athlete. You see, if you can handle more work, recover faster, and tolerate more training volume, then over time you can train harder, get more adaptations, and get better, which potentially makes you a better athlete long term. So given the science, if you're looking to increase endurance, I think whether or not you should take creatine depends on your training volume. People who don't train that much and has plenty of time between workouts to recover 
probably won't benefit as much from creatine as someone who has a high training volume, at least not when it comes to endurance. But for athletes who train a lot and want to see if they can fit more training in, I think that experimenting with creatine can be a solid approach. So if creatine won't make you crush your next marathon, why do so many athletes, including myself, still take it? Because endurance performance isn't the complete story. You see, creatine doesn't just affect your muscles, it also affects your brain. In 2024, a meta-analysis showed that current evidence suggests that creatine monohydrate supplementation may confer beneficial effects on cognitive function in adults, particularly in the domains of memory, attention time, and information processing speed. Think of it like this. Creatine won't make you Einstein, but it will give you a bit more energy when your brain feels fried. Think of it like an extra rep for your mind. And if your goal is longevity, then there's another thing to consider. Creatine supports muscle mass and strength as we age. That means better protection against injuries, stronger bones, and just the ability to stay healthy and active for longer, if you do it right. So if you want to try creatine, how much should you take? And are there any side effects? For years, the standard advice has been simple. Three to five grams of creatine per day. That's usually enough to keep your muscles fully saturated, giving you the strength and recovery benefits we talked about earlier. But when it comes to the brain, things are a little bit different. Some studies have tested higher doses, around 20 grams per day for a week or two, and found that it raises brain creatine levels faster with small but noticeable benefits for memory and fatigue resistance. The downside is that at this dosage, you're more likely to get some stomach issues or just waste your money because you're fully saturated, so you're basically just flushing it down the toilet. Now, before you go out to buy a kilogram of creatine, let's first discuss some of the downsides and the myths surrounding creatine. First, the most common side effect is water retention and bloating. When you start creatine, you usually gain one to two kilograms of body weight as you store more water inside your muscles. For most people, that's not a problem because we want water inside our muscles, then we look more muscular and more full. But if you're chasing race weights, it's something to keep in mind. Second, stomach issues. A higher dose, especially 20 grams per day or even more, can give some people nausea and diarrhea. That's why it's often best to split the dose up throughout the day or just start with five grams and then build your way up from there. And then for some reason, there's still a ton of myths surrounding creatine. So let me try to set the record straight using a scientific review from 2021 as the evidence. The first myth is that creatine is just water weight. Creatine does pull some water inside the muscles at first, but long-term studies show that it doesn't increase bloating over the long-term or cause any unhealthy water retention. In fact, that extra water inside the muscles is actually a good thing. It's linked to growth and performance. Myth number two is that creatine is a steroid. It's not. Steroids are hormones. Creatine is just a compound that your body already makes, and you also get it from foods like meat. It fuels energy production, a completely different mechanism, and it's completely legal. As of recording this video, of course. <laughs> The next myth is that creatine damages your kidneys. The truth is, this has been tested for over 20 years. In healthy people, recommended dosages of creatine does not cause kidney damage. The only reason this myth exists is because creatine can increase the levels of what's called creatinine in blood work. And creatinine can be a proxy that doctors use to assess kidney function. But according to the research, that's a false flag not actual damage. The next myth is that creatine makes you bald. The truth is the only study ever to suggest this was a tiny trial in rugby players that found a temporary bump in DHT, a hormone loosely linked to hair loss. No follow-up studies have ever confirmed that. Today, there is zero solid evidence to support that creatine causes hair loss. The next myth is that creatine causes dehydration and cramps. The truth is large trials even in football players training in the heat found the opposite. Creatine uses 
actually had fewer cramps. They also had fewer heat illnesses. But a small note here, you do store more water, so most people find that they feel better if they also up their water intake with their creatine. Myth number six is that you need to load creatine. The truth is that you can load with about 20 grams per day for a week and then go down to five grams and then your muscles are saturated and they will get saturated faster. But you could also just go with five grams per day and then in about a month, you will be just as saturated and get the full benefits as if you had loaded with 20 grams 20 grams for the first week. So loading isn't required. And the last myth is that creatine only helps bodybuilders. Sure, it is amazing for strength, power, and muscle building. But research also shows benefits for adults, recovery from injury, endurance athletes and heavy training, and even brain health. If you're healthy, creatine is safe. It might make your VO2 max number look a bit lower, but it's probably because of water weight. For endurance training, it won't boost a single race, but it can help you recover faster, train harder, and even give you a small mental edge. But it won't really help that much unless you are combining it with the right type of training. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video right here.